think these are the review problems, some extra application problems. Number one, write an expression for y equals f of x by solving the differential equation dy dx equals x times the square root of y with initial condition f of 3 equals 25. Let me see if I can squeeze that in right here. So we want to separate the variables. So let's bring our root of y over to the left side. So we have dy over the square root of y is equal to x times dx. And then we want to integrate both sides. So think of that root of y in the denominator as y to the negative one half when you go to do that antiderivative. So let me work this way. Antiderivative of y to the negative one half would be y to the one half times two. And then antiderivative of x would be x squared times a half plus c. I would probably go ahead and use my initial condition here. When x is 3, y is 25. Let's see, so that would tell me that 2 times the square root of 25 is equal to 1 half times 3 squared plus c. So if you do the arithmetic and you solve this, you should get that c is 11 halves. So if I go back for a final answer here, well, there's a, a bit more work to do. So we have 2 times the root of y is equal to 1 half times x squared plus 11 halves. I would divide both sides by the 2 right here. So that'll tell you the square root of y is equal to 1 fourth x squared plus 11 fourths. You can write that all with a common denominator if you want. And then to get rid of the square root, we'd square both sides. So y is 1 fourth x squared plus 11 fourths quantity squared. And that's how I left the answer on that one. Onward, number two, consider the differential equation dy dx equals y minus 1 squared times cosine of pi times x, cosine of pi x. Find the particular solution y equals f of x to the differential equation with initial condition f of 1 equals 0. I know I'm going to need a little more space, so let me scroll down for this one. If you separate your variables, step 1 would be that you have Bring your y's over to the left side, dy over y minus 1 squared equals cosine of pi x dx. If you feel the need to write this with a u substitution on the left side, you can. But since the derivative of this left side is just dy, then I, I don't really think you have to do that. Just consider that as y minus 1 to the negative 2, all right? So the antiderivative, add 1 and divide by that. So negative, help if I put the integral symbol here. So then we get negative y minus 1 to the negative 1 equals antiderivative of cosine is sine. So we have sine of pi x, but pi, pi is just a number, okay? No different than having like a three there. If you were taking an antiderivative with a three, you would divide by three. So we need to divide by pi or write it as one over pi, either way is fine. And then don't forget the plus c on the end. Let's go ahead and find our c. Initial condition was 
um, when x is 1, y is 0. So if I put a 0 in for the y, I get a negative, and then negative 1 to the negative 1. Okay, that looks kind of confusing. That's like having this guy is 1 over negative 1 over y minus 1 to the first. So this is negative 1 over negative 1. So the left side is going to be 1. And this is 1 over pi times the sine of what was x? x was 1. So the sine of pi plus c. The sine of pi is 0, so the right side is just c, so it looks like c is 1. So negative 1 over y minus 1 equals 1 over pi times the sine of pi x plus 1. Then it's just a matter of maneuvering to try and match the answer that is given. How about we get rid of that negative? 1 over y minus 1 equals negative 1 over pi sine pi x minus 1, distributing the negative. Then if I just take a reciprocal here, I get y minus 1 equals, actually, you know what? It would probably be a good idea if I got a common denominator over here. How about we call that negative 1, just negative pi over pi, so that this part's got a pi in the denominator, and so does this. So that's negative sine pi x minus pi all over pi. Now when I take that reciprocal, it's a little bit better to deal with. I get pi over negative sine pi x minus pi. Last step, add this one. y is equal to um, You can either leave it like this, pi over negative sine pi x minus pi and then plus 1. Or when you see how it doesn't quite match exactly what I have over here. So if you want to change this up and just make, like multiply by a negative 1 top and bottom, it'll make this negative, this will be positive, this will be positive. So you can rewrite it as 1 um, minus pi over sine pi x plus pi. Not going to worry too much about the final form. Number 3. Let p of t be an increasing function that models the number of mice in a laboratory population at time t, where t is greater than or equal to zero. It is estimated that p will satisfy the differential equation dp dt equals 30 times the root of p plus 40. Find the particular solution to the differential equation, same equation we had, with this initial condition. p of zero is one of four. Okay, this is number three. So if I separate my variables, I get dp over the square root of p plus 40 equals 30 dt. And we can integrate both sides. So on the left side, Consider that p plus 40 to the negative 1 half. So the antiderivative would be p plus 40 to the positive 1 half. 
So that's just the square root of p plus 40 divided by a half, so times 2. And on the right side, derivative of 30 in terms of t is 30t plus c. Let's see about finding that c. p of 0 is 1 of 4. See how nicely that's going to work out? 2 times the square root of, if you put 104 in for p, you get 144 equals 30 times 0 plus c. So c is 2 times 12. c is 24. 2 roots of p plus 40 equals 30 times t plus 24. To solve this for p, let's divide by this 2. Root p plus 40 equals 15t plus 12. To get rid of the square root, you want to square both sides. So p plus 40 is the quantity 15t plus 12 with a square. And then finally, p is the quantity 15t plus 12 squared minus 40. So that's number three. And finally, number four. At the beginning of 2010, a landfill contained 1,400 tons of solid waste. The increasing function W models the total amount of solid waste stored at the landfill. Planners estimate the W will satisfy the differential equation dW dt is 1 25th times W minus 300 for the next 20 years. W is measured in tons. T is measured in years from the start of 2010. Find the particular solution W equals W of T to the differential equation that was given with initial condition W of 0 equals 1400. Step 1. Separate your variables. DW over W minus 300 is equal to 1 25th dt. We will integrate both sides. And on the left side, we will have a natural log, because that's w minus 300 to the negative 1. So that will be the natural log of the absolute value of w minus 300. Kind of nice that it's w minus 300, not 300 minus w. Those problems we've had before, we had to take into account a negative one. And this one doesn't have that. Right side, 125th t and then plus c. I think on the work that I showed you, I went in and found the c at this point, And it works. You can move forward with it, but it's kind of a pain on these problems. It's a lot easier if you do the way I said on the right side where it said or. Just think of this as e raised to a power. So on the left side, I can get rid of the absolute value. W minus 300 is equal to e raised to this stuff. Okay, so remember that's the same as some other c times e to the 125th t. If you still don't get that, this is e to the 125th t times e to the c, right? And then just call that some constant. This is where I would find my c. So we know w is 1,400. So 1,400 minus 300 equals c sub 1 times e to the 0. So C sub 1 is 1,100. Revert back to there. And we can say W minus 300 equals 1,100 times E to the 125th T. And then finally just add the 300. 
W is equal to 1100 E to the 125th T plus 300. I know I did those pretty quickly, but uh, hopefully that is helpful.